Have you heard of ancient trilithons? You've probably seen them if you've seen a picture of Stonehenge. Wikipedia defines a trilithon as trilithon or trilith is a structure consisting of two large vertical stones or, or posts supporting a third stone set horizontally across the top as a lintel and it is commonly used in the context of megalithic monuments. The Osirian, of course, fits the bill perfectly. In fact, it is described as a series of trilithons. You may well ask, why then is the trilithon at Baalbek called a trilithon? That I have no answer for. Maybe they thought that it once was a trilithon and then it was put into a wall, but it is definitely three large blocks. So maybe that's the reason. The first trilithon I ever saw was in Tonga and it blew my mind. Uh, it was so gigantic and not in the sort of location that one would expect to see a trilithon. But I deviate as usual. And let's get back onto the subject of the Assyrian. The Osirian is referred to as the cenotaph of Seti I because it's located at the rear of the beautiful temple of Seti in Abydos. Now, if you are new to my channel, you won't have seen all the other episodes I've done on this amazing structure called the Osirian. But this is just one of a series that I'm doing on the Assyrian, looking specifically at one particular aspect of the Assyrian. I'm also doing another series where I look at the various theories that the independent researchers have regarding the Osirian before giving my drum roll final episode, which is still to come at this point in time, on what I think the Osirian was for. But this particular episode is on the trilithons because there are no other structures even Stonehenge does not compare to the size and bulk of the trilithons of the Osirian. The part of the Osirian which is considered a series of trilithons is made up of rose granite. Each of the blocks of rose granite is massive and they are perfectly smooth and they are mortarless so they're not held together using mortar. So let's just have a look at some photos of the Assyrian so you can get a good feel for what it looks like today. Sometimes it's flooded like this and sometimes it isn't. Luckily when I went it wasn't flooded and I think they're working to try and keep it water free, well at least out of the main central area of the Osirian, but this gives you a good idea of these gigantic blocks and there is a diagram of what Egyptologists think that the Osirian might have looked like at one stage and it's a cross section so if you can imagine this is only half of it and this is what it used to look like thousands of years ago.